How's it going, guys? We have a mixed step one, step two question here, and that obviously mechanisms of action very step one like, but I would say this diagnosis is pass level for 2CK, albeit difficult for step one. Okay. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. So, 73 year old woman. She has osteoporosis, type 2 diabetes, hypertension. She reports occasional burning in her throat the past two weeks. Her medications were updated a few weeks ago and include calcium carbonate, vitamin D, alendronate, metformin, gliburide, lisinopril, and metoprolol. A drug with which the following properties or mechanisms of action is most likely responsible for her acute presentation. So let's just whip to the answer choices here. Choice A comprises cation fraction within hydroxyapatite. Wrong fucking answer. Obviously, this refers to calcium. I mean, I don't know what to say. I think some people would actually choose this as uh, the answer because you do need to know for U.S. Similia that divalent cations, calcium and iron, can interfere with the absorption of tetracycline antibiotics as well as fluoroquinolones, e.g. ciprofloxacin. That is exceedingly high yield for family medicine, okay? It's not related to this question, but sometimes you see calcium carbonate pop up in a vignette. It's an important uh, element to be aware of, okay? Divalent cations. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, converts osteoid, unmineralized osteoid and hydroxyapatite. Wrong answer. That's just vitamin D, okay? We could do a lengthy discussion here, all right? I mean, vitamin D, sure, it's going to uh, facilitate the mineralization of bone uh, deficiency, rickets in children, osteomalacia in adults. You can get vitamin D deficiency in chronic renal failure, causes hypocalcemia in chronic renal failure. Um, long fucking discussion, okay? Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C decreases CAMP, wrong answer. It's a bit of a tricky one, okay? That just refers to the metoprolol here. So beta one and two, obviously metoprolol is beta one selective, but uh, if we have, we're talking about the G proteins, the beta receptors are G alpha S, okay? So if you agonize G alpha S, you increase adenylocyclase activity, increase CAMP. If you antagonize the receptors, you're decreasing CAMP. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D increases diameter of renal efferent arterioles. Wrong answer. This would refer to the ACE inhibitor, lisinopril. So obviously angiotensin II functions to constrict the efferent arterioles. So if we merely block the effects of angiotensin II, then we're going to decrease constriction of the efferent arterioles. Notice I say ACE inhibitors don't dilate. They're not dilating. For instance, prostaglandins would dilate the afferent arterioles. NSAIDs would decrease dilation of the afferent arterioles. Well, ACE inhibitors are just decreasing constriction of the efferent arterioles, and in turn, they're increasing in diameter. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, increases glycolysis, decre decreases gluconeogenesis, wrong answer, refers to metformin. A bit of a nebulous uh, mechanism of action, but you need to know metformin can cause lactic acidosis, okay? So if you get a question where a patient has a low bicarb in the setting of being on metformin, you need to discontinue it. That can hit at the lactic acidosis. If the patient has a creatinine of 1.5 or greater, then you don't want to be on metformin. You need to discontinue it. And where do I get that number from? It's from NBME questions. I mean, normal creatinine 0 0.7 to 1.2. So you say, well, any elevation in creatinine could increase the risk of lactic acidosis while metformin. I've seen a US simile, an NBME question for TCK where a patient had a creatinine of 1.4 and commencing metformin was correct in that setting. But when you get a high creatinine, you need to avoid metformin. That's another known point for the exam, okay? They were just overtly telling you creatinine's 2.2 and a patient's on metformin you need to discontinue it wrong fucking answer choice f inhibits osteoclast is the correct answer so this is alendronate you need to know bisphosphonates as well as potassium supplements which i didn't mention here are the two highest yield agents that can cause pill induced esophagitis okay so i'm not talking about erosive esophagitis or ulcerative esophagitis that you get due to agranulocytosis neutropenia, e.g. from clozapine, uh, propothiouracil, methimazole, gancyclovir, etc. I'm talking about 
bisphosphonates and potassium supplements can cause pill-induced esophagitis, meaning burning in the throat after you take them. And patients just need to be instructed to drink lots of water with them, stay upright for at least a half an hour. It's nothing dramatic, but as I said, as I prefaced with, this is past level for family medicine. If you're studying for step one, it's difficult. Okay, I mean, many of you haven't heard that before. Okay, fine. So, but these mechanisms of action need to be aware of. Uh, you could know that alendronate is third line for osteoporosis. First line treatment is going to be weight bearing exercise on the NBME for step one. Long walks is correct over swimming. Makes sense uh, for decreasing fracture risk. Then you go on to calcium vitamin D. Then you can go on to adding a bisphosphonate. Alendronate just tends to be the one U.S. simile mentions a lot. I've seen pubmedronate on U.S. simile as the first line therapy after normal saline for treating hypercalcemia, okay? I haven't seen any other bisphosphonates used, just pimidronate, doesn't matter. I'm just mentioning it as an example. I've never seen calcitonin used for hypercalcemia on US simile. And you could be aware that osteonecrosis of the jaw as caused by bisphosphonates, exceedingly low yield. Students get absolutely hysterical over weird sounding details like that. Finally, prevention of potassium efflux, wrong answer. This refers to gliburide, okay, so sulfonylureas for type 2 diabetes. They're insulin secretagogues, so you could be aware that on the beta islet cells, you have an ATP-gated potassium channel that can be closed by sulfonylureas. Potassium builds up in this, within the cell, causes depolarization, leads to calcium influx, which in turn leads to efflux of insulin vesicles. Gliburide, in theory, could cause hypoglycemia. Haven't seen it assessed Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. Make to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.